What's going on, everyone? Pat Mayo here. Quick update before we get into the Thursday Night DraftKings picks. We recorded this before. Chris Godwin was limited in practice with a quad injury. There is no official status on where he stands for Thursday, but if he continues to practice throughout the week, comes back on Wednesday, practices on Thursday morning, goes through the walkthrough, he should be fine. I just wanted to let you know that in the context of our discussion, we did not know that at the time. It doesn't really change anything at the moment, except for that if he is iffy to play and he comes down to a game time decision, you know, all in on Godwin in the captain spot because that's going to kill his ownership. Tons of money up for grabs this week, including a million dollar top prize on DraftKings. So let's get to the strategy and most importantly, the picks. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2021, Week 1, Thursday Night Football, Dallas at Buccaneers, DraftKings Showdown Picks. We're here. The, the first football game is actually happening. So what I need you to do is smash the like button to the episode and in the comment section, you give me a score for this game. You think Dallas wins? You give me the score. You think Tampa wins? You give me the score. Give me any score for this game. Not the other games. This game. Only subscribe to Mayo Media Network while you're here, too. And if you want to play on the best tournament on DraftKings, the Week 1 Listeners League is now available. It is in the description of this video and this podcast. And it's $15 to play. You get three max entry. There is no rake in this contest. and We have 3,000 spots we need to fill from this point on. So please, let's go fill this up quickly because I don't think we should be getting rid of rake-free money. To be perfectly honest with you, so if you're playing on DraftKings, you might as well play on the best one. This one is for the main slate, not the Thursday night game, so you still have a few more days to go get into it, so please go join that now. Additionally, if you want to get into a cash giveaway, that's super easy to do. All of the info is down in the description, but here's the, the quick version. Uh, subscribe to Mayo Media Network on YouTube easy stuff. Subscribe to the Mayo Media Network newsletter. Also easy stuff. Now we've taken up officially 11 seconds of your time. The big one, though, that you need to do in order to get into the draw is subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast on Apple Podcasts. Leave a five-star review, make up something you like about the show, and then put your Twitter handle or email in there so I can contact you if you are a winner. Thank you very much for doing that. Let's get into it. Justin Freeman from Run the sims.com is on the line the showdown master himself you've upgraded from doing showdown videos every week using your own tools to us combining and providing these tools to everyone so if you go to run the sims.com slash mayo right now you get 10 percent off the monthly or the season long pass justin what's going on my man Hey, we're doing we're doing big things this year, Pat. Uh, people are really starting to head on over to the site now. Now that we've got some slates to play with, we're not dealing with practice slates, dummy slates, anything like that from the past. We've got the good stuff now. We've got a real uh, a real juicy looking Thursday night game that we're going to dive into here today. Uh, you know, Buccaneers and Cowboys. I'm pretty excited about this one. I think there's like we know a lot about these teams. They're pretty well established, but yet there's a few situations that I think we can make some you know, pretty tough calls on and hopefully it'll pay off for us. Hopefully. So can you inform people to how well you do in showdown over the course of the past few years? Cause I don't think that people know. Uh, I mean, it, it's not like you're Matthew Barry and have a million Twitter followers. People need to know how good you are at this. Yeah, I'm well over 900,000 Twitter followers away uh, from hitting that particular threshold. But uh, we've had a really good showdown run over the last year or two. So I got into showdown um, really last summer, I teamed up with uh, Brian Jester, a buddy of mine over at Occupy Fantasy, to write an ebook. Like, I was like, you know, we hear over and over and over again about how niche contests are sort of the key to unlocking expected value because, you know, winning on the DraftKings main slate can be a really tough thing. Like, there's a lot of really sharp players also putting in lineups there. So, maybe learning something about these niche formats and showdown sort of fits there. It's growing. And obviously it was pointing up, you know, everybody wants to play more and more short showdown slates. So I was like, let's, let's do the research. Let's dive deep, figure out what actually matters here. And like, as we're talking about showdown, it became really clear, like, well, you know, some sort of like simul, if you could simulate the game over and over and over again, you could actually find out who the perfect roster combinations are to make a unique showdown lineup. And so that's what we did. I did a ton of research last season, uh, last off season, and pumped that out over the course of the past season. 
and had some pretty excellent spiked weeks in there. Um, had a really good ROI over the course of the season. I, I don't like to talk too much about that stuff, but uh, you know, it's been super successful. So I was really excited to try to make this more of like a user facing tool where other people could take advantage of that, put their own spin on things. Like you don't have to just sort of copy and paste what we're doing. You can take your own sort of assumptions about how the game's going to go. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. A lot of people have enjoyed playing with it so far. I've always been under the impression that for Shodow that you really do want to tell yourself a story of how this game is going to go down. Like if, if the Bucks right now are favored by eight points against Dallas. Now, if that's the case and they win by nine, let's say you think the Bucks cover that spread. How does that game look? Or if you think it's a field goal game, how does that game look? If Dallas wins, how does that game look? And then you can put your assumptions into the simulator that way. And like you said, you ran the simulation so many times. We've now built a site that is predicated on running the slate and running each each game 10,000 times. So there's a lot of different assumptions that you can put into that. So again, run the sims.com slash Mayo to get yourself the discount on these premium tools. There are free tools up there as well. If you're just wanting to do your research, but if you want access to the simulator, that's the way it's going to go. Let's get into the pricing for the Thursday night game. There's a million dollar first prize on DraftKings this week too. So you probably want to check that one out. Tom Brady is the most expensive, obviously on DraftKings. The captain is worth 1.5, the amount of points, but you also have to pay 1.5 times the salary for that as well so if we just go through it as it in as it pertains to a flex play and we'll talk about captain strategy in a second 11-2 for tom brady 10-4 for dak prescott 9-6 for ezekiel elliott 9-2 for mike evans godwin is 8-6 cooper is 8-4 cd lamb is 8-2 leonard fournette's an even 7,000. the gallop at 6-2 and antonio brown at 5600 dollars. so what i want to do to kick it off is jump on over to run the sims to show people what we're dealing with over here, because I really think this is going to help out my process. So we go to the DFS tab, we go to the D DIY Simulator HQ, we pick our slate, which is going to be the, where is it here? Not Thursday through Monday, we don't want that. Dallas at Tampa Bay, DraftKings, let's jump in here, and what am I, you can already see some of the assumptions that I've made so far. Let's, let's, let's reset everything to what the baseline assumptions are for this game. So are these your projections that you have in there right now? Is this what you're playing, Justin? Yeah, exactly. So this will be updated throughout the course of the week. You get sort of it preloaded with what my baseline assumptions are. And you see that it comes with you know, sort of standardized assumptions for not only the Cowboys as individual players there, but also their team level stuff. So the number of points we expect them to score, which is sort of defaulted to the, the known Vegas spread at this time, which, you know, as you mentioned, it's, it's an eight point spread and the, the totals creeping up a little bit too. So, uh, you know, this was a game that Tampa was actually only favored by six and a half uh, just a couple, just about a week ago. And now that line has crept all the way up towards eight, which is, uh, it says something either about the strength of Tampa Bay or the weakness of Dallas, because you think about the way that, uh, you know, the, the news has broken over the last couple of weeks, like really, if anything, the news has gotten favorable towards Dallas and the fact that Dak Prescott is now you know, expected to be in 100 uh, percent locked and loaded at quarterback for this game. Obviously, they're without. Um, you know, Zach Martin along the offensive line, but you know, you would think I would, or at least I would have thought that Tampa Bay wouldn't be more than a touchdown favorite, but here we are. But yeah, as you mentioned, you know, everything sort of comes preloaded there with, with our, you know, sort of baked in assumptions of how this game goes, but obviously turning the knobs and levers in this game is what makes things really interesting. So we can go in and play around with a bunch of different game scripts. So let's just see what the baseline assumptions have for us here. Let's run the Sims and this will what simulate the game 10,000 times, Justin. Yeah, actually 5,000 times here on the, uh, on, on this showdown slate is what you'll get. So you'll, you will basically, by the time I finish the sentence, you'll have your own custom lineups right there. And there you have it sorted first of all, by our optimal results. And basically the same, how often does any player on this slate pop up in the winning lineup? Um, and so, and by winning lineup, like it's really clear that in showdown, you need to be focused on having the best lineup period that's that's mathematically possible under the salary constraints. Uh, it's, it's a little bit different than say showdown, even playing the Millie maker, you may not need the perfect lineup showdown you do. So uh, in, in this situation, we see that Dak Prescott's north of 70% in terms of how frequently he pops up in the optimal lineup. Obviously, the majority of the time he's there as a flex option, but some period of time he's in there as the, the winning captain as well. And so we have this sort of handy dandy red and blue coded 
uh, bar graph off to the side as well. Red tells us how often as a flex option, blue how often as a captain uh, option there in those lineups. And, and no surprise, obviously, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, despite being the two highest priced guys on the slate, are going to be among the more optimal options. Like you would have a hard time uh, you know, getting the salary up high enough on either quarterback for them to not be super likely to be in a winning lineup because that's just how quarterbacks score points. Yeah, so Dak being, it's funny because we've had this conversation before as it pertains to DraftKings showdown and what the best way to play this is. And it's usually not having a quarterback in your captain spot. So when we run these simulations and everything pops out, is this because these are two teams that use so many options in the receiving game that it's really hard to peg down who it's going to be? Like when we look at the optimal results, like Ezekiel Elliott, so it's Dak Prescott, then Tom Brady in terms of how much they're going to be like the, the highest owned captain or MVP in that type of situation, you know, in 54% in the flex spot when you talk about optimal results. But I would think that on a week to week basis, like the Elliots or the Godwins who are next in line, then the CD Lamb, Amari Cooper and Ronald Jones would probably be more likely to be the most prevalent in the captain spot, wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. And, and you hit on it, Pat, in the fact that both of these teams have really competitive target trees. Like if you think about the Cowboys and the way they're set up, like you can't just say that it's all going to Amari Cooper with any degree of certainty, or it's all going to CD Lamb or Michael Gallup. Like these guys are going to sort of alternate and they sort of take away from each other in terms of their expectation. And then add on top of that, that Dak has his own rushing ability um, it makes it really tough for any of those other guys to sort of run away with it in terms of being an optimal captain. Now, obviously, what we have to do is layer, uh, you know, an element of game theory on top of this to say, like, OK, we think that Dak and Tom Brady are really good captains uh, for this week. But what is the rest of the field going to be doing? Um, might we run into a lot of duplicate lineups? Uh, if we're playing a lot of quarterback captain lineups, and we know that that's, that is indeed the case, like playing a lot of Dak Prescott quarterback uh, captain lineups are going to be heavily duplicated. You have a tough time getting really unique that way. So even though uh, we see that they are you know, ideal captains, the fact that everybody else thinks that as well makes them less than ideal. So we have to not only think about what's going to happen, we have to think about what everybody else is going to do about it. It's just funny because I'm looking at the lineups uh, from the optimal, like what it put out. So the, the two lineups that tied were Elliott as the captain, Dak, Ronald Jones, CeeDee Lamb, Legatron, and then Amari Cooper. And then the other one has Dak Prescott as the captain, Ronald Jones, Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, Dallas defense, and CeeDee Lamb. It's really trending towards like the, the overwhelming super stack of the Cowboys in this. And I think that's going to be a very unpopular option. Like maybe the public perception of the Cowboys – you know, becomes overwhelming in such a giant slate like this. And that's the way that people go. But you would have to think that the majority of people are going to stack up the team that's favored by eight points. And although Tom Brady came out as second in terms of the optimal percentage as a captain, he rarely shows up in any of these builds. I assume that's because it's hard to make lineups work if you take Dak and Tom Brady and the options are just more palatable with Dak when you try to put up the optimals next to each other. Yeah, exactly, because it is hard to imagine a situation where Dak himself is not in the winning lineup. Obviously, it doesn't happen a ton of times, about a quarter of the time, roughly. So it, it can be tough to sort of nail that down in a lineup without Dak, but perhaps that's a really good uh, solution for this game is if you want to sort of lean on the Buccaneers here in this game, you can obviously modify the number of points scored uh, that we expect them to have in this game and maybe even increase their pace up a little bit. So, you know, if we think that, you know, Tampa sort of walks away with it here, then maybe we, come, uh, you know, bump their points scored up to maybe 35 or something like that, see what that looks like, and then turn their pace, which is currently set at 64, turn that up to 70 or something like that. And now all of a sudden we're expecting them to run about six more plays and then we'll sh we should start to see more and more Tampa friendly lineups popping up uh, towards the top there. So we do have some controls here in our hand and we also have, uh, you know, some decisions to make. And obviously you see that Brady and Prescott sort of flip flop there towards the top where Brady's popping up now as the you know, more prevalent flex and captain option in this game. You see Chris Godwin there as well. Ronald Jones working his way up the leaderboard as well. So, you know, we used to see a lot of stars up there towards the top. We're seeing a lot of pirate flags now with the Buccaneers 
uh, starting to get a part of that. So, you know, I think you know, further we can drill down a little bit more into the team level stuff and the, uh, the players for the Buccaneers. And so, you know, currently the targets are split pretty evenly among Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in this offense. And so if you had a lean where it was going to be more Evans or more Godwin, you could certainly uh, add those there. But one thing you'll notice is off towards the right of both of those receivers' names is the catch rate. So, you know, this is just sort of fundamentally different about who Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are. You see, we have an anticipated catch rate for Evans of 56% and Godwin 73%. And that just sort of makes sense with what we know about those players. You know, Evans is sort of a, a boom or bust, deep target type. Type of guy Godwin a little bit more sure-handed that means he's a little bit more likely to pop up as a winning flex option if we think that we're going to get very similar amounts of targets but you know if you wanted to make some sort of assumptions about you know Mike Evans was going to be more likely to uh you know take advantage of a of a pretty tremendous defensive matchup here you could modify his catch rate to maybe closer to 70 percent or something like that and then we could rerun again, and then all of a sudden we should be seeing, you know, Mike Evans looking a lot more attractive now that he's projected for a percent higher in terms of targets and now a much more similar catch rate. And so now we've run that, and Mike Evans is the third best option on the slate. So you can see how just making one little twist uh, of the knobs and levers that we have available uh, sort of changes everything that, that you have. And, you know, from that point, we can just click on – uh, over on your custom lineups, click download CSV, and that'll immediately uh, download a DraftKings uploadable file there for you to be able to, to play as many of those lineups as you want to. And uh, we mentioned you've got access to 5,000 lineups there to choose from. Um, many of those are duplicated with each other. So um, you can pick and choose which ones uh, make make the most sense for your build. Yeah, and then I think it's really important to make your own assumptions about a lot of this stuff. So I have some injuries to report from the game, uh, at least from the skill side of the ball. Zach Martin is not going to play on the Dallas offensive line. He's an all-pro. That's not good for them, especially because Ndamukong Sue is going to be back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just enhancing what their pass rush is going to be. So it might be a bit difficult to block. Backup offensive lineman Brandon Knight is also out for the Cowboys. Leal Collins is going to play it seems at the moment. And from the other side of the ball, Antonio Brown and Gio Bernard were a bit iffy coming into the week. It does appear like both of them are going to play. And this is all in the newsletter that I put out last night, but I'll just give you some of the stats of weeks 9 to 17 from last year when all three, the big three of the Bucks receivers were active. So when they all played on the field at the same time, over that stretch, Brady threw for over 300 yards five times. Uh, so that's not bad, <laughs> at least if we're thinking about attacking this through the air. In those five games, Chris Godwin went over 80 yards receiving four times, the same number as Mike Evans and Antonio Brown combined. Godwin caught 78% of his targets, where it was just 69% for Mike Evans and Antonio Brown. And in those games, Tampa Bay averaged 38.4 points. So those are some of the assumptions that maybe you can make. And listen, maybe that's not how it comes out of the gate in week one, but this is a perfect defense to sort of run that offense against too because I was more thinking about it hey how is this going to translate into my DraftKings life but I know that DraftKings has the same game parlays right now too so from like we're just taking those trends of what this offense looked like last year you know you could just go Brady over passing yards Chris Godwin over passing yards and over Buccaneers points and you might be in a pretty good situation yeah, exactly. I mean, you think about the, the, there are some huge advantages out there right now with same game parlays and the ability to take advantage of like, you know, it's essentially what we're trying to do in DFS. We're trying to essentially nail one particular thing and then that one particular outcome unlocks three correlated outcomes. So we're going to be able to essentially multiply our winnings, even though we don't really deserve to. And granted, most sports books sort of have that baked in at least a little bit, but we can still find our edges throughout. And I mean, you know, I'm really excited about this game because I, I'm anxious to see the Dak Prescott led offense for the Cowboys and the Brady led offense for the for the Bucks has been nothing short of phenomenal second half of the season and beyond last year. And the thing is, the Bucks have a defense to go with it and Dallas does not. And so that's a, a real big uh, hole in the Dallas boat that could really make an interesting game script especially in the fourth quarter, like if you think one team's going to blow out the other, certainly seems like the Bucks blowout is much more in play. So I'm just, I clicked on over on the other tab. I went to the actual game player projections, which you can go in and see and kind of manipulate around if you want. But based on the settings that we just put in, you know, Brady and Prescott, 
you know, one and two in terms of points. Brady by far more than anyone else. But then you have Evans, then you have Zeke, then you have Godwin, Cooper, Lamb, then Fournette, then Jones. So I want to go back to the inputs for a second because I want to figure out the Tampa Bay backfield just a little bit and how we should really try to break this down. The one thing about showdown that I think even myself, I get caught up with this. That's why I like to play the three max or the single entries, because I know that there are people using tools like this, like yourself, that maybe I'm going to do it this week, too. And just chuck in 1500 bucks into the $10 and see see how well I do from that regard. But if I'm playing up against 150 lineups, you know, it's tough to have a single bullet that is unique. Do you think that if you're going to try to win these large field tournaments, because all of like the pros or people that are really good at showdown that I see, as opposed to the main slate where you can throw in 150 lineups and brick them all, it does seem like you can get somewhat of an even distribution. Just give yourself more shots because the combination of lineups is so much smaller on a showdown slate where you only have six players. There's only one game at stake. Yet, if you're going to play these giant contests and really try to win do you think you have to play 150 lineups uh no i don't think so i think your best bet of finding a unique lineup is probably going to be by playing 150 it's going to be really tough for you to feel confident let's say you want to throw a 10 dollar entry out there into 150 max tournament you're gonna have a tough time feeling finding one that you feel decent about that is not also highly duplicated. Whereas if you're playing 150, you get a lot more disconnected away from your lineups. Like each lineup means nothing to you. Uh, You're just sort of thinking about things from a portfolio standpoint. And you just sort of wait until the fourth quarter to look at your phone and say, well, hey, I've got uh, five lineups that look like they can make a run. I need a touchdown to Chris Godwin here. And I'm solo first place. But it's tough to make that type of lineup when you're just doing one, I would take a lot of discipline and you just have to be totally okay with bricking a bunch. So, I mean, my thought would be if you want to play a single uh, lineup or three lineups or something like that, I always try to tell people to find contests where that is the maximum number of entries allowed by anybody. And that way it's at least a lot more of an even playing field. Granted, you might not be able to win a million bucks in that particular instance, but there's still some really good prize pools out there for single entry contests for showdown. Absolutely. And then that's, I like to play like the, the I, there was a $50 single entry last year, a hundred dollar single entry for showdown slates. I, and I found myself funny, funny enough. I didn't win as often on those ones, but I actually won more money in the long run rather than throwing in like five entries into the gigantic $10 where even if I min cash, like what's that really doing for me? Oh, I get 15 bucks back. I'm still down 35. At least when I hit and cash in the hundred dollar single entry, at least my payouts were pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. As long as you're not bare minimum, you're probably going to 4X, 5X, something like that. And that keeps your head uh, above water for you know four or five more weeks. And that's obviously super helpful as you're trying to maintain a bankroll. And I know a lot of players will struggle with that, especially here in week one. Like I mean, we've been waiting for so long to get some action down. And now here it is. It's, it's tempting to not blow your entire wad all on week one. Well, let's talk about just the players in the game in particular. I want to just really focus on Ezekiel Elliott because I found him a really hard player to rank this week in the season-long weekly rankings. I'm glad that he's not on the main slate because I know that people would be fading him. And just using the Run the Sims projections for DK points, you know, his median projection is going to his 50, 50th percentile projection is going to be 16 and a half DraftKings points, and his 90th percentile is going to be 26.8. This is a bad matchup. All things considered, he is an eight-point underdog on the road against the league's best run defense. So I'm curious what you think is a realistic outcome for Ezekiel Elliott in this game. Well, I would start off by saying I've been really excited about Ezekiel Elliott all offseason. I think he's in a tremendous situation to succeed this year. I think he's going to come back hungrier and look ready to rock and roll. But this is a heck of a first matchup for him to go against. I'd say the one sort of silver lining, though, to go along with it, obviously, this is maybe a top three run defense in the league, if not top one overall. Um, But we know that defensive numbers don't tend to translate the best year over year. Like if there's anything that's going to change, like it's tough enough to project offense, projecting defense is this whole other ball of wax. And so we don't know for hundred percent certainty that that same, you know, Tampa Bay run defense is going to show up again in week one. They obviously made it through the course of an entire season last year, relatively healthy, made it to the big game, played well. But, uh, you know, I, I'm confident that the Cowboys, you know, led by Dak Prescott, 
can emerge with some positive rushing success. Now, I would not say this is a game where I'm super uh, you know, in favor of Zeke breaking the 100-yard rushing bonus or anything like that, but the fact that Zeke is so involved in the offense, not only in the run game, but also in the check down pass game, uh, makes him super valuable. And I don't know how much the team wants to involve Tony Pollard again this year. Uh, that'll be a big question mark surrounding Zeke's ceiling. If we thought that we could get away with, you know, Tony Pollard being mostly an ornament on the sideline, I think uh, that does a lot to help Zeke's ceiling overall. I think for this particular game, and I agree with you that year over year, that defense is hard to really tell you much like a good defense could remain a good defense but there's a gigantic difference between being the number two defense and the number nine defense overall that means yeah. they are significantly worse than they were a year ago this is a really interesting example because obviously everyone's a year older but it's essentially the exact same guys that are coming back and playing defense for this team and so rarely do you see that you know you take three guys away you add in three new guys how is that going to meld together will it be the same and i don't know if it's going to necessarily be the same year over year but that continuity i would would think has to go a long way especially against a beat up offensive line for Dallas so I think from a rushing perspective I'm not super bullish on what Zeke is up to in this game but I think it hits on what you said is how many passes is he going to catch because I think the way that you would have to piece together a Zeke as captain or even a Zeke as a flex play in this game because the yardage especially on the ground is probably going to be pretty low he's probably not going to get to any of the bonuses is can he get himself to like six catches for 66 yards and maybe punch in two touchdowns from the one yard line I have to feel like that's the story you have to tell yourself if you want to use Zeke in this spot yeah I mean and another story you could tell yourself is that this game won't be as high scoring as we like to think it's going to be um, obviously the totals north of 50 right this second which you know tends to be a pretty good predictor of a, of a shootout type of game but if the game does stay a little bit more low scoring and there are fewer touchdowns to go around that obviously reduces the number of points that we need to get from a guy like Ezekiel Elliott but uh, yeah, I'm with you. This is a super tough matchup. There's no way around it. Um, you know, you couldn't draw up much of a tougher you know, week one opponent for him to go up against. But you know, if this game does get a little bit lopsided, if Dallas is having to throw a little bit more in the second half of this game, um, you know, we do often see that be a big boon to running backs. Like we'd like to think running backs are totally dead when they get game scripted out. But if that running back also happens to catch dump off passes, like that's a good way to move the chains. It's a good way to move the sticks. That's a good way to stay on schedule for a team who might be down a couple scores. So yeah, I'm not trying to shy away from Zeke. I know a lot of people will see the you know defense versus position red letter next to the Tampa Bay defense and, and stay away, but I, I'm going to try to not to uh, you know, focus too much on the passing attack here for Dallas and, and make sure I give Zeke uh, adequate exposure in the lineups. So when we think about the Dallas receivers in this spot, it's really hard to project how the target share is going to be divvied up and even what the depth of those targets is going to be. You'd probably assume that Michael Gallup gets, it's funny with his ADOC, is either he's sort of targeted at the line of scrimmage or deep down the field. He seems to be the big hitter here. He's also the cheapest of all the Dallas receivers. Do you think that there's going to be a lean against Amari Cooper? Because we didn't really see all that much of him in the preseason. There's always the narrative that he plays much better at home than he does on the road, much better indoors than he does outdoors and obviously this is going to be outdoors. And then you have how bullish everyone is on C.D. Lamb coming into the season, because especially in week one, whether it's showdown slate or whether it's the main slate, people's season-long fantasy drafts get in the way of that. That's still clouding their judgment at that time. They're not looking at this, hey, this is one isolated game. Just C.D. Lamb might be by far the best receiver on this team. That doesn't mean that Amari Cooper can't have by far the best single game this particular week. It leads me to believe that Cooper is going to be the one that kind of gets bypassed in this spot um and that would be the assumption that i would want to make when filling out my lineups especially if i wasn't playing a lot of lineups because i think that might give me some leverage on the field having dak and cooper in a lineup yeah, I think that's really smart. And, um, you yeah, know, if you wanted to get really unique, you might be able to play both of them together in a single lineup. But yeah, but people have been super quick to go ahead and put the crown on CD Lamb this year. And I do wonder if that's totally premature because, um, you yeah, know, we haven't seen 
a big drop off from Amari Cooper. Like I still think he is a phenomenal wide receiver just because CD lamb might be a really promising second year player. Let's not forget. Like, I mean, the Cowboys are in deep with uh, Amari Cooper and he's been a great player for them over the years so far and has a tremendous relationship built up already with Dak Prescott. I think he comes in and I think it's fair to assume that in this week one game, they should be able to rely on him. Now, granted, you know, the, the receivers in this offense have missed some times for various reasons over the course this offseason um you know there wasn't uh, there was about a month there where i think the only thing i saw on twitter were cd lamb training camp highlights uh so that's been a thing but he's recently come off the covid list and so he's missed a, a smidge of time there as well so yeah i think they're back on a level playing field which i think to me you know everything else being neutral uh amari cooper could stand to be the three or four percent target share favorite uh, in this week one matchup. Yeah, it's really interesting. How do you think that the tight ends, because the tight ends, the kickers, and the defenses for the Dallas side, especially on DraftKings, could factor into this? Like, how you get a defensive score right away that basically nullifies out a lot of the offense just because they're going to run fewer plays and it probably adds plays to the Tampa Bay defense and vice versa when we talk about them. I, I'm just always really hesitant to put in defenses or kickers into my lineup, but sometimes you see them in the optimal. It happens. Yeah, exactly. So they have to be sort of mixed in, you know, I think trying to nail down when is the right time to play defense and when's the right time to play kicker can often be a fool's errand. Like you'll often, what'll happen is you'll, you'll want to play the, you know, it was the Pats defense you know, a year or two ago when they just seemed to go nuclear all the time and you wanted to play them. But guess what? I mean, when everybody else plays them, there goes the leverage associated with having them in your lineup. And so it's usually when a team is really popular to play on defense is the time to not play them and then vice versa. So here we've got a game where, you know, Vegas implies a shootout. However, the good thing about shootouts is that they can actually still be really good for defensive scoring on DraftKings. Like so, so little of the DK score at the end of the day uh, for a defense is made up of points allowed. And I know that's sort of the, the initial driver that everybody thinks about. But what we really want is dropbacks. What we really want is opportunities for the defense to create pressure. That's when bad things happen for offenses, sacks, turnovers, pick sixes. Um, you know, return opportunities, things of that nature. So we don't need a low scoring game to play a defense. And, you know, I would think that there's a really good shot, you know, with so many sexy options across the board up top that these defenses could go uh, very much under the radar, including the Dallas defense. I mean, we've seen Tom Brady obviously play elite levels of football, but he's not immune from turning the ball over. In fact, most really great quarterbacks sort of insist on the ability to try to fit the ball into tight windows in order to, you know, sort of extract the most value. And that means they're occasionally going to throw an interception and that's, that's fine. So while this Dallas defense may be absolutely terrible, doesn't mean they can not play good, uh, good enough to get into your DraftKings lineups. So, I do want to let everyone know, if you're looking for Monday night football or Thursday night football sh drafting showdown picks every single week, uh, my guy, the Griff Dog, Griffin Swanson, is going to have those on the Fantasy Football Picks and Bets audio feed, and they will be up on Mayo Media Network as well, along with prize picks. And hey, if you're here, you might as well play in the prize picks super props contest that we got going on at Mayo Media Network as well. Uh, just hit the description, you'll find everything down there, but it costs $7.11 a week. If you already have a prize picks account, then you can play it. Play a seven dollar and eleven cent entry every single week, and you're in the contest. First prize is going to be three grand as a bonus to you on top of what you win on a weekly basis. There's also fifty dollar bonuses each week if you do pick props five for five over on PrizePicks.com. But you have not deposited as of yet, and you do want to play in the contest. Just follow the link down in the description, or go to PrizePicks.com and use the code MMN at checkout. And when you deposit, they will match your deposit up to a hundred dollars. If you just uh, if you just deposit sixty five dollars, you get the match of. 65 and then you're covered for all 18 weeks to play in this contest i'm playing in it i'm going to convince justin to play in it cust is playing in it jeff's playing in it we want to play against you guys i mean i'm going to take your money obviously because i'm definitely going to win this just a big bonus for me but hey if you think you're better than me come play in the competition we'll find out who actually is the best at picking props and there's tools at run to find the best props as well whether it's a good over or good under wager and you can pick rushing yards fantasy points whatever it is the combination that you want so check that out prizepicks.com code mmn at deposit description for full details let's talk about the tampa offense because i think this is where a lot of it's going to be unlocked you hit on defenses to start bucks defense seems like a really good play here 
we know they're an attacking defense. They have a high projected point total. They're expected to face a lot of pass attempts, and they're going up against a banged up offensive line. That that smells like success to me. Yeah, the Bucks defense is definitely in play. I imagine they'll be a lot more popular than the Dallas defense, and and rightfully so. I think there's a lot more opportunity for them to be able to pin their ears back against this Dallas offense, um, and that could reap benefits. But obviously, picking and when uh, you know a defense is going to go off uh, can be a really really tough thing to do. I think I'd rather sort of pick my edges around some of the you know further down the depth chart type of decisions that we have to make. Uh, in this Tampa offense, you, you mentioned sort of the running back split there between Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones, but we also have you know, a third person that's now a part of this mix and Giovanni Bernard. And it, uh, you know, time has yet to tell exactly what type of role Gio will have in this offense. We saw Lombardi Lenny obviously struggle to catch the ball, as did Ronald Jones, for that matter, a, a pair of brick handed rec- receivers out of the backfield. And they brought in Giovanni Bernard, who, you know, I think if you told yourself the best possible story for Gio Bernard, you'd say, well, he could be the James White of this, uh, you know, former Patriots offense that's now down in Tampa Bay. And if that's the case, now all of a sudden he becomes really interesting there at cost. And so, you know, trying to figure out what that running back rotation is going to look like is super interesting. Um, yeah, I have Ronald Jones as a slight favorite to lead in terms of rushes. I have Fournette as a slight favorite to lead Jones in terms of receiving volume. And uh, But I have it as pretty much a right down the middle split between those two guys. And then Giovanni Bernard coming off the bench to provide some relief. And I think he's a guy that you could see take advantage of a negative game script. Not that I truly expect one here for Tampa in this game. And then after the running backs, you have to think about what this tight end rotation is going to look like because that evolved over the course of last season too. You have Rob Gronkowski and Cameron Brait sort of as the one-two option, but also you're getting O.J. Howard back in this game. So with a fully healthy O.J. Howard now in the offense, uh, how much will Bruce Arians lean on him as a receiving option? Obviously, we've seen him have tremendous success uh, as a sort of a deep threat tight end, which is not something we get all the time. But if he can sort of lift the lid, then you know he would be a tremendous low price dart throw for us to consider in this offense. But you know, as you think about sort of the receivers that are behind Evans, Godwin, and Brown, there's not a ton of uh, interest for me in playing you know sort of a Scotty Miller, Tyler Johnson type. Uh, But what I would do, though, Pat, is when the inactives are announced and inactives are announced 90 minutes before every NFL game, what we'll do is we'll find out that, you know, Jalen Darden is not suiting up or Tyler Johnson is not suiting up. And that gives us just a smidge more market share of targets to give to other dudes in this offense. And that can help us sort of crystallize the picture around where to expect the ball to go. I think taking advantage of some of those last minute nuggets and then rerunning your Sims can be a really big way to get an advantage over your opponents. So you, all you can do to do that if you're on runthesims.com, once again, slash mayo to get that 10% discount, is you can just set them to zero right now if you wanted to, if that's what you anticipate, then reallocate that market share onto someone else, or just wait until the inactives are released, wait 10 minutes and the site will be updated, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can um, you can do it yourself. You can wait for us to do it. Either way you want to do it is is totally fine. Uh, but you know, it is picking up those little crumbs that can give you a big edge over your opponents because, like, let's just say all of a sudden it's Scotty Miller and his four percent target share that we have projected is is you know sort of a inactive there at the last second. Then all of a sudden, you know, Mike Evans is looking a little juicier. Chris Godwin's looking a little juicier. Maybe Antonio Brown looks like he'll stay on the field a little bit more. Something like that. You you choose. You make the decisions. And uh, you can sort of influence things that way. But, yeah, I do think these tight ends are really interesting. I've got Gronk as the target favorite right now. Um, He obviously will will have his up weeks and his down weeks. And, you know, his scoring is usually really tied to touchdowns. But, you know, I'm not out on, you know, Gronk and Brady running back, you know, what they did in the Super Bowl again here in week one. Yeah, it's really the Tampa offense is like a Rubik's cube that if you can really solve it in real time this week, it feels like that's how you're going to unlock all the big money, both on DraftKings and in the player prop market. So let's try to go, let's try to make some assumptions about these teams and then I'll rerun the Sims. Maybe that's the lineup that I'll go with for the week that I think that we need to pick a lane of which receiver do we think is going to be really good in this contest. And like when I went through the stats a little bit earlier, I mentioned like Chris Godwin is the most consistent one, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the best one in this particular game like do you think so there's one of two builds we could go with here one is the tampa defense build 
that they actually do some scoring. And then I would probably want the Dallas players to go along with it. I know that seems counterintuitive, but that would just keep the Tampa Bay offense off the field. If you can get lucky with the Tampa Bay score, maybe run just an overload, maybe even a 4-2 of Dallas players to Tampa players and have the defense mixed in there. Uh, I think that will be relatively unique. I mean, it's obviously not going to be, you're not going to be the only person that plays that, but I think that's an interesting way to think about this game. Or if we just wanted to pick and choose some of the guys from Tampa Bay, do you think that Godwin would be the guy to go with? I think that Antonio Brown, if we just really juiced him up. So if we go over to the projections and we tell ourselves an Antonio Brown story here. So let's say that, you know, Darden does nothing. Let's just get rid of all of his share. We put him down to zero and we'll add his 3% on to Antonio Brown. So that brings him up to 16% market share. Tower Johnson, yeah, that's good. We'll keep him at four. We'll keep Scotty Miller at two. I mean, he probably gets more than that, but who cares? We're doing this as a fun thought experiment. And then we're going to bump down Mike Evans to 15%. 15. Oh, I got the non in there right now. So we got 15%. That gives us another five to throw around. We'll keep Godwin the same. So we'll bump up Antonio around to 23%. And we'll say that he has just such an awesome game. He catches the ball 80% of the time. It is thrown his way. And we're going to bump down... We'll even bump down Chris Godwin to 10%. We'll take away 8% from him in the market share and bump up 8% on Antonio Brown in the touchdowns. Oh, boy, there we go. What did I do now? We'll go to, uh, just bump him up to 20%. See how we're doing in that. There you go. All right, so now we have a really good Antonio Brown game because I'm thinking that with the backfield, like in this sort of game where they're throwing, does that mean that it's all Antonio Brown on offense all the time or does that mean that they're trailing? Because I do think that if they're trailing in this spot, Giovanni Bernard does become somewhat unlocked, but if they're ahead, and that's a story that I want to tell myself, then I don't think that we see a ton of Giovanni Bernard. I mean, A, he is a little bit banged up, but it seems like a negative game script or third downs only or where you're going to see him. So I think I I'd probably want to lean with Ronald Jones in that spot too. So with the way that I'm thinking about it right now is could I play Brady Brown and Ronald Jones and maybe the Tampa defense and then just go crazy and try to go Cooper and Dak on the other side. Cause I think that lineup would work. Yeah. If that fits under the salary cap, I think that's uh, an interesting way to go Four two uh, is maybe not the most unique, but it's certainly more unique than a three, three balance build. And it depends on which one you're able to get in as your captain selection here as well. I think we want to try to steer away from the quarterback captain. If we can, especially if we're going to be right up against the salary cap, if we've got a lot of, um, you know, salary cap left to spare, perhaps we can get away with it, but let's try to stay away from that 50 K max. And I think we'll be pretty unique. So I'll do this too. I'll lean it towards Ronald Jones. So I'll bump him up to a 55% market share of the rushes and bump him up to a 49% share of the touchdowns and just take it all away from Fournette. And see, this is like half the time we're going to see Ronald Jones on the field, a quarter of the time we're going to see Fournette on the field. Then we'll get a splicing in of Giovanni Bernard and maybe some Tom Brady sneak action when he gets into it. Just hope that, I guess if we're playing Brady, then it's all good if he wants to rush in some of these touchdowns. They'd probably be more beneficial in our our lineups if it was going to be Ronald Jones. So on the other side, let's just really gear this game towards Amari Cooper. So we'll bump down CD Lamb to 15% of the market share. And that will make Amari Cooper 26%. Just make that one simple adjustment and then see what happens. And I'm going to rerun the Sims and see if it gives me the lineup that uh, that I'm thinking about when I put it through. Maybe the Tampa defense doesn't end up in the main one that I have, but you know, Tom Brady, Antonio Brown, Dak Prescott, Ronald Jones, Amari Cooper would be my top five in terms of overall most optimal in the settings that I have just put in. And then with my custom lineups, uh, Antonio Brown is captain, Ronald Jones, Dak, Gallup, Amari Cooper, and Brady. So that gives me a 3-3. Three, three. Then you have Dak as captain, a lot of Antonio Brown is captain. A lot of Ronald Jones is captain when it comes down to this now with almost uh, Ronald Jones and Antonio Brown in every lineup. So here's sort of the one that I was looking at right here. Antonio Brown is captain. This came out uh, as the fourth most optimal lineup uh, when I ran it 5,000 times. It spit this one out 30 times and it's only 48 hundred dollars forty eight thousand two hundred dollars of the salary cap it's antonio brown as captain dak prescott with amari cooper ronald jones tom brady and bucksty i think i like that lineup i think that might be my one i, love it. I think you need to go enter that right now you need to play at single entry uh don't do pat uh <laughs> go ahead and play that man that's a really sick lineup i love that it's eighteen hundred dollars is eighteen hundred below the cap and uh 
I mean, that, that's a, that's like the sweet spot to me. Like, I think if you're leaving like 5K on the table, you can get really unique that way, obviously. But to me, that's giving up too many projected points. This has a real legit opportunity to, to, to thrive, basically with the exact game script that you just described, which is, you know, some sort of score for the Tampa defense. You know, the rest of the Tampa offense scores via Antonio Brown and perhaps via Ronald Jones. And, and then Dak Prescott concentrates his target usage to Amari Cooper. I love it. I think that makes total sense, and it's right in the sweet spot. And Antonio Brown won't be the most popular captain out there this week. No, I, I most definitely think that he'll probably be the third option of the Tampa Bay receivers, I think, in the captain yeah. spot. But may, maybe not because he's cheaper. So it, people might feel like if you use Antonio Brown, I would wager that Gronk is probably a more popular captain than Antonio Brown this week, though. I think there's something to it. I mean, people definitely have recency bias. And the last thing we saw from Gronk was a two touchdown game in the Super Bowl. Um, he, he's going to be highly owned. Uh, I, I don't anticipate as highly owned as the uh, the three wide sets from each of those teams. But, uh, you know, he's certainly in play. I love your lineup, Pat. I, I may steal it myself. I'm not going to lie. Well, put it this way. If you've ever wanted to come in last place, like see yourself legitimately in last place in the contest, that might be the lineup for you. Gotcha. Well, I mean, uh, I, I've come in last place many a times. It happens when you're shooting as many darts as, as I'm doing. Uh, you know, you finish towards the top of the green quite a bit and towards the bottom of the gray. Uh, decent enough. All right. Justin Freeman, co-founder of runthesims.com. Once again, runthesims.com slash mayo to get 10% off. We just kind of showed you just how I'm using it this year. Justin has a bunch of tutorials up there as well. Justin, are you going to play in the Pat Mayo Experience Listeners League for the main slate, though? Yeah, I think I have to. I think that's the the actually very next thing I'm getting ready to do is is hop in your listener league, like rake free, right? Fifteen bucks. Yeah, rake free five. And, and I've made sure that it's completely flat payouts because I did see a pretty interesting thread. I forget who it was from. I think it was Jordan Cooper the other day that you know you don't really min cashing isn't great. I mean, it's it's better than losing, obviously. But min cashing yeah. in DraftKings contest, I mean, you get like fifty percent. Like if you put in ten dollars, you win fifteen dollars. Like that's that's not really doing you all that well if you're playing multiple lineups, at least in the Pat Mayo Experience Listeners League, because there's no rake and there's flat payouts. Everyone who cashes gets at least double their money. So if you finish in the money, you get 30 on your $15 entry. And just little edges like that really go a long way to be able to sustain your bankroll. They really do. And people forget that. I mean, you have to ask yourself, how many times have you ever finished first in a large field tournament? And the answer is probably zero times for the vast majority of people. And so aren't you kind of tired of paying for other people's prizes? Why don't you want your money to go towards the positions where you'll tend to finish, which can often be not the 0.001% at the very, very top. So, you know, look for flat playout, payout structures. You don't want to be playing in contests where, you know, 40% of the money is going to first place unless, you know, you've got a strategy dedicated towards beating that. But the vast majority of us do not. And so look for that. Look for at least two on your money every time you min cash um, that extra 50 percent uh, can go a long way in helping you sustain a role throughout the season yeah the the payouts this week there's five thousand spots available it's a guaranteed prize pool so get in right now and the link is in the description like i mentioned uh so it's five thousand dollars to first for the five thousand dollar tournament i really wanted these flat payouts so it's five thousand three thousand twenty five hundred two thousand fifteen hundred one thousand and then you still get seven fifty five hundred three hundred two fifty all the way down to if you do min cash you get $30 uh, on the way back. I like these contests better. I work with them for these rules because I want people to play in this contest every single week. Like people don't get the opportunity to have rake free contests all the time. Uh, frankly, yeah. what is there like two of them that exist? And this is one of them. This is the largest one of them. It's a guaranteed prize, but we need to fill it every single time or else they're just going to make it smaller on us. Exactly. And, and to be honest, if you're like a $50 a week type of player, you should absolutely be playing this and nothing else but this tournament. Um, so, so go in there, make it bigger for sure. Um, yeah, I think knowing when to play certain tournaments is a, is a skill in and, in and of itself. Playing in rake-free contests it gets no better than that. Yeah. All right. Justin Freeman, what else you got going on this week? You doing any more media? I saw you over on the Fantasy Headliners YouTube page. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're doing, I'm doing a spot a week over there for the fantasy headliners. They've got a huge audience. Um, and we're trying to get, we're trying to spread the good news of run the Sims uh, <laughs> to the, uh, to the good people over at fantasy headliners. And so I'll be around all season. Um, yeah, I'll be doing some content occasionally over on the run the Sims YouTube channel. You can go over there and check things out. 
Um, but you know, overall, I just want to encourage folks to get an account on Run the Sims. We've got some really cool free stuff, so you can get a free account. But the really good stuff is paywalled. So as Pat mentioned, use code Mayo at checkout. That's ten percent off currently. So get ten percent off a season long sub right now with code Mayo. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. If you're interested in sort of turning knobs and levers, or you're kind of a, a nerd when it comes to DFS, this can be for you. Or if you're not really a nerd, like we've got enough stuff out there to help you figure it out and you know put you back in contention for winning big field. Uh, tournaments. Essentially, if I can use it, anyone can use it because I am an absolute <laughs> moron and it's pretty easy for me to go in and you just you saw to twist the numbers or I, I can tell because the thing is like no one's giving you picks. You have the baseline assumptions from you that are in there, which I should probably just stick with. And I'm like, no, I know better than the computer. I know better than Justin. Let me tell the computer what to do. And then it will give me what I tell it to do. Like, that's perfect. That's all I've ever wanted with a football tool set. So now I got it. And now let's see if I can actually put it to good use and win some money this year. Hopefully the lineup I just gave out one, no one else plays it. And I win a million bucks and then, then you'll just never see me again. So maybe you, maybe that's just a win of best case scenario for all people who knows but anyway justin freeman you can follow him on twitter at justin freeman 18 run the sims.com slash mayo to get that 10 percent discount listeners league link is in the description as is the prize picks props contest you probably want to get in that right now by the way before week one starts and you're not a week behind everyone else because it's still open to people after the first week and you can get in on those weekly bonuses too so it's never a bad time to sign up use code mmn to go do that and the cash giveaway the three things like i said so to the show rate and review sub to the channel on youtube and there was something else sub to the newsletter where there's just you know more cash giveaways more stats more everything in there as well as we'll update you with injuries i'll be back on the pat mayo experience the rest of the week i got adam levitan for the full main slate DraftKings picks cam and rob for best bets and breakdown on friday we got some injury reports up on fantasy football picks and bets ton going on at mayo media so smash the like on the way out sub to the channel okay I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.